Good morning. It is 9 a.m. on Friday the 30th of April 2021. My name is Aaron Hunt. I'm a partner here at Stace Hammond and I head up the Migration Partners team. And as always, this is not legal advice. It is just our commentary on immigration here in New Zealand. If you're looking for legal advice, get in contact with us. Uh, we'll put it in our email down below, website, get in touch with us. We'll see if we can help you out. Uh, it might take a couple of days to respond to you. We are pretty busy with our clients, uh, but we do try to respond to uh, inquiries as quickly as we can. We've got lots to cover today. This is going to be a very uh, long video, but lots to cover. We'll put uh, time recordings in the description below so you can jump to the section you want to see. Um, if you want to watch the entire thing, go ahead. It's, it's uh, your choice. Uh, first, we're going to look at the new border exceptions that come into effect today, um, which in true Immigration New Zealand fashion uh, were only released at 5.03 p.m. last night. Uh, next we'll look at what we are waiting, well we were waiting for in March and April and haven't yet received, uh, which will just be a general update on skilled migrant draws and the replacement of the essential skills work visa. Then we'll look at the restrictions for those coming from uh, India and then we'll be looking at the events coming up in a couple of weeks on 13th of May in Wellington. Uh, if you do find this video of use then please like it and share it to others and subscribe and click the bell uh, notification to be notified about future videos. First we're going to cover the new border exceptions. Uh, those of you who have been watching our videos for a while will know that we have been campaigning for about six months to get more assistance for the partners of critical health workers. That doesn't mean that other partnerships are less worthy, but we saw a group, a group of people who the government had been praising and thanking, but then not letting them to be with their loved ones here in New Zealand. We finally managed to get some movement on this when the Prime Minister became aware of the situation, uh, but even then it took several months for something to actually happen. Those changes were announced a couple of weeks ago, but without much detail. Uh, we've seen a number of comments in uh, the YouTube post to, uh, to our YouTube posts um, that asking about certain situations, and you'll see that we've been very cautious with our responses, that we need to see more of the detail, the changes to the operational manual, as we felt that the Minister's announcements might not include all the conditions and requirements uh, that we'd actually see in the real rules when they came out. <coughs> we now have those rules, they came through at 5.03pm 3, 3, 3 last night, and unfortunately we were right uh, that they didn't go as far as the Minister seemed to have suggested. There's more requirements in there, more restrictions, ex uh, exceptions, but we'll cover those in each of the areas as we go through them uh, in, the next, in this video. There are three areas covered by these new border exceptions. The first is the partners of critical medical staff, um, the, then there's the partners of other critical workers, and then there's partners of work or student visa holders. We'll cover them all one by one. Uh, one thing to note is that all of these will still require evidence to show that the relationship is genuine and stable, which Immigration New Zealand is interpreting as also, also needing to show a history of living together. So merely being in a relationship with somebody or being married to them is not enough to meet the threshold. Check our last video where we covered the living together criteria in more detail. So critical health start, staff is where we're going to start. As always, any reference to the operational manual in our videos will be a mention of a letter followed by a number. So if you hear me say something like that, so say like H5, which we're going to cover a lot today, then that is means we're referring to the operational manual in regards to H5, H is the sort of COVID exception section under the temporary entry visa section of the operational manual. Um, now you can find the operational manual reasonably easily through Google and we'll also try to remember to link it in the description below so you can get a quick fast link through the operational manual and see what actually what it is we're talking about. The changes we're talking about today won't appear in the operational manual possibly for a couple of days. They could be there now, I haven't actually checked yet. Uh, typically it takes a couple of days between us getting the uh, notifications of the changes and the changes appearing actually online in the manual. Now the partner of critical health staff, uh, and when I say the word partner here, I also mean partner and dependents. It's easier to say partner rather than saying partner and dependents every time. So dependents are included in these categories. We have a note actually on dependents later on uh, for one of the categories we'll come to. But when I do say partner, I mean partner and dependent children. So the partner of critical health staff and other critical staff both fall under the new uh, subcategory h 52515 m uh, the H52515 is being where a lot of the exceptions fall under. This is the new sort of sub-exception number, um, letter M. The wording for this, for critical health at least, is 
uh, the partner or dependent child of a work visa or a critical purpose visitor, visa holder who is in New Zealand and that visa holder's visa indicates they are employed in an occupation in critical health services. It then refers to H53045, which is another new category uh, in the operational manual. Now H53045 provides a little more information um, and re refers through to H531B, which is actually the listing of all the roles that are classified as critical health, which includes, I'm going to mention, uh, nurses doing their CAP. There is no minimum visa time left for the person in New Zealand, which is different to the other visas uh, we're going to come to in, in a moment, which is good. However, the issue here is that in the original announcement, it was about people who were working in these roles. So it would indicate that it was going to be available to open work visa holders. However, we were cautious about this, and you'll see that in our comments uh, to questions in the last, in the last video. And stated that we need to see the actual requirements and the actual wording of the operational manual, and we were right. Immigration New Zealand is keeping this option closed to open work visa holders who may have jobs in critical health roles. The requirement, as I said before, is that the visa indicates that you are employed in an occupation in a critical health services. So the visa needs to state the role, it needs to state the job. So if your visa is under essential skills or work to residence and states you are a nurse, then you should fall under this as nurse is, is under that list of critical health roles in H531B. However, if you're a nurse working under an open work visa, so your visa doesn't state you are a nurse, then you do not fall into this category, even though you do work in a critical health care role. Uh, we know this will impact a number of people who worked especially in age and disability care. Unfortunately, if you did want to bring in your partner and you were working in one of those roles and you were under open work visa, you will first need to get a work visa which states your role, which will typically, for most people, be an essential skills work visa, which is going to add some time to the process as well as the hassle and the cost of doing the essential skills work visa process. Um, the rule change also puts the partners of citizens and residents at a disadvantage advantage, as they do not hold visas that state a job. So the partner of a New Zealand resident or citizen who works in critical health cannot apply for a border exception under this rule. Uh, so if the partner is from a non-visa waiver country, the citizen or resident will need to leave New Zealand to collect him which seems to be a, a, a real big issue with this sort of not being across the board same role. We wrote to the Minister of Immigration, the Honourable Chris Fafoy, on the 19th of April when he made this announcement to point out this discrepancy and we have not yet received a response. Uh, we also know that one of our clients wrote to the Associate Minister of Immigration, the Honourable Phil Twyford, on the same date about the same discrepancy and has not received a reply. Uh, later in the day, uh, on the 9th of April, this was raised with the Prime Minister during uh, a question time and she said that such people can go to the Minister for inter Intervention. As we know, the Minister is refusing to intervene for any application for a CPVV, for a border exception, unless it seems they are entertainers. Uh, we know of several New Zealand citizen doctors who have been to the Minister, only to be told that the Minister will not even look at this situation. So while this new exception is great for some, and we are, we are loving the fact that the exception has come through finally, for those on open work visas and those who are residents and citizens, it means continued separation from their partners while they do some very difficult and stressful work. And that's disappointing. Now the next area of the exceptions is other critical workers, so the partners of other critical workers. This also falls under the same H52515M, which is sort of a double-barreled one, uh, and it states, the partner or dependent child of a work visa or a critical purpose visitor, visa holder, sorry not visit, visa holder, who is in New Zealand and that visa holder's visa was granted on the basis of current employment that meets the specified salary and is highly skilled as defined in H53050. So the visa here needs to be granted on the basis of the employment, restricting it again to visas that state the role, um, so essential skills work visas and work to residence, because if you're on an open work visa, you are not um, granted a visa based on the employment, you, uh, you have the employment because you have the visa. This time, H53050 actually provides more requirements than we saw with the uh, critical health worker partner exception. The visa holder needs to be in New Zealand, 
um, the person that that's the, the partner uh, needs to be in New Zealand when it has the job and have at least 12 months left on the visa on the date that the partner offshore applies for the border exception. The visa holder in New Zealand also needs to be earning at least twice the median salary, so $106,080 per annum uh, minimum. Uh, they must also have, and this will be the hardest point to prove of this application, they have to have one of these things, uh, be able to show one of these things. They have unique experience or technical, and technical or specialist skills not readily obtainable in New Zealand, a role essential for the completion or continuation of a science program under a government funded, funded or partially government funded contract, um, or their role is essential for the delivery or execution of an approved major infrastructure project or government approved event or major government approved program, an approved government to government agreement, or work with significant or wider benefit to the national or regional economy. Now, some of those things working on a major infrastructure project of which there is actually a list of what they are in the operational manual, generally building of certain roads, of hospitals, that sort of thing, or major um, events, so the FIFA Women's World Cup, things like that, those are ones that are easy to prove. Proving things like the unique experience, technical or specialist skills, not really be obtainable in New Zealand, or working with uh, to provide a benefit of national or regional to the regional economy, those are things which are very subjective and hard to prove. And we are seeing uh, Immigration New Zealand being reasonably strict on proving those things. Uh, we're doing we've done a couple of those. There are a couple more coming up at the moment, and it really is about showing Immigration New Zealand that these people who are applying are exceptional, uh, have skills that just cannot be found in this country, uh, and that their, their being here is of major benefit. Um, so we are advising caution for those applying for this border exception, not caution in that it's going to be a bad thing if you get told no, but just caution that it is a harder one to prove as it requires that sort of subjective analysis of the job and we don't want people to get their hopes up and thinking great I earn you know, a lot of money, I can bring my partner in. There is more to it than just the salary, there is that hard side of proving the benefit to New Zealand and the difficulty there is in, in replacing you effectively. Uh, it is still uh, an option which is great to see but just be cautious before you get your hopes up. The third category is under H52515 L and is for, I'm going to read this out exactly as it says, um, people who, who held a visitor, work or student visa on 19th of March 2020 that was granted on the basis of their relationship to a work or student visa holder who is currently in New Zealand and on the date they express interest, the date they apply for the border exception, they either still hold a um, relationship based visa that is still current or that relationship based visa had a first entry condition and had they entered on the last date following uh, that first entry condition their visa will still be current. Uh, then refers to H53040. And we're going to break that down a little bit so it's a little bit clearer because that can be a lot of words there. So for those people who had a partnership visa on 19th of March 2020 but were unable to enter New Zealand, uh, your partner is still in New Zealand on a, a work visa or a student visa um, and your, part, your visa is still valid or it would still be valid had you been able to enter New Zealand. Uh, some visas will often will only start on the date of entry. So you'll be granted a visa, say a two-year visa, to be here, but it will be two years starting from the date you enter the country and you have six months to enter the country. That, that's an example. Uh, so that two years would start on the date you entered. So in that situation, um, look at the last date of entry that was allowed and calculate the visa length from that date. So if it was... Uh, last day of entry was going to be, say, uh, May 2020, and you had a two-year visa from the date of entry, then that visa would have gone through from 2020 to May 2022, meaning that had you been able to enter New Zealand on that last day, that visa would still be valid. You would then possibly fall under this category. So this would allow those of you who still hold partnership visas or would hold them had you been allowed to enter the country to come into New Zealand. Uh, sadly, those of you who had partnership visas which have now expired, and it, they haven't expired because you weren't able to enter the country, this does not cover you. It only covers those whose visas uh, are still in place 
or would still be in place had they been able to enter. Now H53040 provides a little more detail and more requirements. The partner in New Zealand needs to have at least 12 months left on their visa on the date of the, uh, the border exception it's applied for. Um, there may actually be a mistake in the manual here that, that this uh, H53040 actually refers to uh, H52515G which is another partner allowance in the border exceptions when it should be L rather than G. Uh, yeah, it's a minor typo, perhaps a cut and paste gone wrong, uh, but that 12 month requirement still remaining on the visa, uh, that is that is the case for both this and the other critical visa, uh, the critical um, worker visa allowances for partners. Now dependent children, there is a new clause, uh, H510 CV for dependent children who may not have a visa due to not being born or being adopted uh, if that took place on or after 1 December 2019. Again this refers to uh, subsection G rather than subsection um, L um, which means it only applies to people who, who are partners or ordinary live in New Zealand. Now we expect that such an allowance for dependents who are recently born to apply to all of these exception categories, but at present it only seems to apply to that one group. Uh, there is a similar allowance for essential skills worker who are, workers who are caught offshore and have children born um, after that 1st of December 2019 offshore, but it would seem strange not to allow the newly born dependent children of those who held partnership visas and may have left New Zealand to give birth or those who have given birth to the child of a critical health worker not to be able to bring the child into the country to be with both parents. So that seems to be a bit of a, an error there. So that could be uh, a typo, that could be um, an error with the drafting. We think it's uh, definitely not quite right there. Um, now part of what we'll see to will be us seeing as to how these new categories are applied. For now we've just seen the rules that came through last night, we haven't seen them applied to any applications yet. Uh, they are great to see and it's been a long time coming to give more allowances to the partners of critical health workers, but the restrictions and exemptions do make them a little bit bittersweet. You know, they're not quite what we were after and there are still a few issues with them uh, which we would hope the Minister would actually respond to us uh, about. Now we want to look quickly at what we should have received this month but haven't, uh, which will be covering the skilled migrant draws and the new work visas. Now for skilled migrants the draws have been stopped for more than a year now with them due to rest restart in May 2021 unless, uh, actually so April 2021 was the date, unless delayed further. We su submitted to the select committee uh, a couple of weeks ago that we believe that such a delay is not within the Minister's powers uh, and we'll link to our submission below if you want to read that. Originally there was word that the Minister would uh, make an announcement by 31st of March 2021. Uh, we also had a session with Immigration New Zealand in late March when they said that there would be an announcement soon and that we would know in the next few weeks. Those are the two statements they made in regards to the EOI draw dates. Uh, but then nothing happened. You know, 31st of March came and went and nothing. And now today is the last day of April uh, and, and nothing. Which leads us back to promises not being kept. Uh, which we seem to, to be seeing a lot of in the last year. If the government says something is going to happen, even if it's uh, as little as announcing something is going to be announced at a future date, we should be able to rely on that. So unless the announcement comes today, uh, we can be certain that the soon and in a few weeks we're both incorrect. Uh, and definitely the 31st of March date was all definitely incorrect. It was a month ago now. Uh, we don't blame Immigration New Zealand. Make very, very clear here. We do not blame Immigration New Zealand at all as we believe that they are often kept in the dark as much as migrants like yourselves are. Uh, we need the, the government to be more honest with what their plans are and to try to stick to these dates. If they say well, we'll announce it by this date then please announce it by that date. People like yourselves are relying on this information so you can plan your lives. Uh, and when they do not give us these, these dates and time, when they delay things, when they just don't say a word, all they're doing is creating more mayhem and more stress for all of you. 
Uh, the same goes for the replacement of the essential skills and work residence visas. We won't go through the detail as to what they are, as we've already done that in a previous video, so please go back and check our previous videos. They were originally due to start in the middle of 2021 with the details on how it was going to work released in late 2020. Well, that was the plan. Late 2020 will give you how it's going to work because these were major changes. Nothing was released. Now, we were told in late March that we would get the details on how they would work in April 2021 and then we would get the uh, the costs in July 2021. So we'll know now the process, we'll find out in July the cost. Today, the final day of April, we haven't received those details. We received nothing more. So we can only assume that the government has delayed the change to the process again and we assume because again the government isn't providing any details or any updates as to when things are happening or what's going on. Uh, when they do provide those uh, dates, those dates are missed. They say we'll do it by this date, nothing comes through. Um, so unfortunately there is really no updates on SMC and on the changes to the work visas because we've been given nothing. The government has missed those dates again. We keep being told by the state nothing, by the state nothing. So we will keep trying to find out what's going on, uh, but until they actually release these things, there's not much more we can say. Next we want to touch on the recent changes of flights from India. Now the original travel ban was uh, on India, ended on 28th of April, which is a couple of days ago. However, on 23 April the government announced further changes for people travelling from high-risk countries. First, I do want to say that our hearts go out to those in India. Uh, we have contacts there I speak to on a regular basis, and we know that things are much worse than is being reported. We see the figures in the paper here, and we do know those figures are not, not the tr truth, not the reality of what's going on there. Uh, and sometimes being here in New Zealand, we forget the hell that COVID-19 is creating in other countries like India, and you really are in our prayers on this. Um, on 23rd of April, the government changed the rules for what they call very high-risk countries, naming those as being Brazil, India, Pakistan, and Papua New Guinea. These rules would not apply to citizens, their partners, dependent children, or parents of a dependent child who is a New Zealand citizen, which is an unusual one which we'll come to in a moment, um, or those with significant humanitarian reasons. Now, the parent one we say is being unusual as there actually is no visa currently available for a parent of a New Zealand citizen child, and there has not been for some time. They can't even apply for a guardianship visa, as the parent of a student visa holder could apply for one. Uh, but that guardianship visa requires you to be the parent of a student visa holder, which New Zealand citizen doesn't hold a visa. So it's very strange to include parents in that categories, but the government has. Um, however, th those are the requirements, that's how they're doing it, and these people must still provide a negative nasopharyngeal, pharyng nasopharyngeal test result, I should be able to say that, uh, from an accredited laboratory within 72 hours of departure, the same rules as currently stands. All other travellers, including New Zealand residents, must spend 14 days in what they have unhelpfully called non-very high-risk countries. Uh, so basically anywhere other than those four countries named. The issue with this will be that it appears that most of the major places that have flights from India, such as the UAE, um, have stopped flights coming in from India. There may still be options, we haven't looked at all the uh, options out there, but we've heard that Singapore and Hong Kong are either have either stopped the flights as well or are stopping the flights. Um, but you'll, you'll need to factor in 14 days in another country outside of India or Brazil or Pakistan or Papua New Guinea, as well of course as flights into New Zealand with MIQ and trying to coordinate all of that. And with the way MIQ works, booking months in advance, though it is getting a bit easier right now, it makes it difficult because if any of those countries change their, their rights of travel from India, you could then be stuck in India, miss that 14 day period and then everything else sort of dominoes cascade and fall over. So it is a difficult situation right now. We are keeping an eye on this um, because this is always going to be a changing situation as we see countries' COVID levels fluctuate. Uh, we think it'll be a while before India does come off the list because sadly things are not looking good. And it's likely to remain in place uh, for a number of, or well, for a long period of time. It's, it's easy for the government to add countries in and take them out when required. If other countries do trend up, and we're starting to see uh, that in Japan, whose numbers are starting to spike and they are doing very little testing, uh, we will likely see these countries being 
added to the pool and as things get better in other countries they'll be removed from the pool. Uh, so this is going to be an ongoing thing for some time. Um, finally we want to mention uh, 13th of May. Now on 13th of May there are several events taking place in Wellington. Uh, firstly there is a reading of petitions um, on immigration at Parliament at 3pm in the afternoon. So all those petitions that were raised at the parliamentary website over the past year uh, in relation to immigration, there's been a number of them, uh, those are getting their time in Parliament um, at 3pm on 13th of May. Earlier in the day at 1pm is also a planned protest at Parliament. Now, the organisers are hopeful that uh, this time members from the Labour Party will actually attend. Uh, our thanks go out again to the Greens National Act, who were all present at the last protest, um, and for, for going there and talking to the people who were actually there protesting, talking to the migrants, talking to the, the people who were missing their partners. It was great to see all the other part parties actually there speaking. Uh, and a number of them actually spoke on stage. I know uh, there was some Greens and some national people who did speak on stage at the event. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to see uh, Labour appearing at this one and being there to show their support, show, in, uh, show their solidarity with migrants and hopefully can provide some more information and understanding what these migrants are going through. Um, I will be flying down to Wellington that day to attend both of those events so if you see me feel free to say hi um, and hopefully I'll be able to provide something to at least to the protester um, in, in Parliament, I'll be there purely listening because that's all I'm allowed to do in Parliament, sadly. Uh, and that is it for today. Uh, we do have more videos coming on a number of topics, but those get pushed to the side when sort of these breaking news bits come through. I will be holding a Q&A session tonight for the Immigration New Zealand Punjabi Hindi Radio News Channel that's on Facebook, uh, covering these new changes. Uh, probably doing a couple of hours of that um, Q&A session. I will link to that event in the description below and I will also may repost the video to YouTube um, on the weekend. Um, and that is it. We will be back uh, at some point next week, I would, um, would assume. Until then, kia kaha and stay safe.